everyone, it's Michael, and today is all about helping number 42 in my collection, my Spathoglottis plicata, adapt to semi-hydroponics. Now, I've talked about this concept a few times before. In the four-month adaptation video, I talked about um, how sometimes there are signals that tell you you need to intervene during the process of your orchid's transition to semi-hydroponics. And one of those signals is that the root system starts to rot significantly. Now, I'm going to take you in on this, guys, so you can see what I'm talking about. But look at the difference. You can see all of these roots. They're very blackened. They're very dark. But the new roots that are starting to grow as it adapts to semi-hydroponics are lush, plump, and like a yellowish green. So in this instance, what I want to do is go ahead and remove all of that dead and decaying matter. And the reason I do that is because as those roots start to decay, they start to consume nitrogen, and then they effectively start to compete for that nitrogen with the viable orchid roots. So removing that dead and decaying matter will help give this plant a good start. Now I'm going to go ahead and begin this process by unpotting the orchid, and then we'll take a closer look at the root system. But before I do, let's talk through the toolkit. I've got 70% isopropyl alcohol and my cutting tool here, sterilizing. I've got my hydrogen peroxide. I ran out of the kind I get from Walgreens in the spray bottle, which I love, so I'm just going to have to use this for now. Um, I've got my Fizan 20 solution, which I just used to sterilize my workstation. And I've got my solution of rubbing alcohol and Blue Dawn dish soap, which will help treat for spider mites, for mealybugs, which this plant did struggle with before. So without further ado, let's take you in closer and get the process started. Here we are, so I'm just gonna go ahead and begin by unpotting the orchid. In the root ball, you guys, there's some really positive signs of adaptation, but you do wanna remove all of the obstacles. So I'm gonna take you in just a bit closer, but do you see that lovely root coming in right here? Oh God, help me, I'm dropping Leica pellets everywhere and they're so painful to step on. But you can really see the distinction between the healthy roots, which are right around here, that they're, again, they're that lovely shade of yellow green, and then all of these dead decaying ones, which are squishy and hollow and gross. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go ahead and uh, try to get the rest of this LECA out and then begin the process of removing all of those obstacles. So I got out as much of the LECA as I could, but now I'm just gonna begin the process of getting rid of all of these roots it is going to be a slow going process, I believe, so I'm probably just gonna time lapse it because there is such a tangled mass of roots and I don't quite know what's good and I don't quite know what's bad until I get it untangled. So I'm gonna start that process. Um, although one thing stands to be said, you guys, when you do this and you see things like this, do not attempt to wrestle the LECA pellet away from the new growth. Those little furs are gripping it and by virtue of removing that LECA, you're going to damage that new root. So I'm just going to leave that guy alone. He's fine. They can be friends, um, but I will work around it. So I've just completed the process of removing all of the dead and decaying root system, and I wanted to give you a visual snapshot of just what the volume of dead roots was. So you can see that is a significant amount of rot, and all of that is competition for nutrients with these viable roots. Now I'm gonna take you in closer so you can see, but you can tell that there's just very few left. Now, a lot of my viewers will ask me when I go through this process, well, why don't you just, as a matter of being proactive, cut off all of the roots when you put it into semi-hydroponics? And the reason I don't do that is because I want to give this orchid the best fighting chance at a smooth transition. You can see a lot of this is new root growth, all of these little tips here, but a lot of it is existing roots. So I want to allow the orchid to sustain itself with whatever resources it has available to it, which is why I leave the root system on and then assess how it transitions to semi-hydroponics. Um, Orchids like my cat Leia, that's number 28 in my collection. Orchids like my Nelly Eiler, that's number 35 in my collection. They adapted immediately and their full root systems remained viable. So that's always a possibility and a possibility that I want the orchids to explore. Now, on to the next step. What I'm gonna do is clip off the flower spike. Um, this orchid did struggle with some uh, mealybugs and so I just wanna remove that possibility altogether. And I'm gonna clip right above the node. Uh, little known fact, or maybe it's a commonly known fact, if you clip just above the node, it prevents infection from spreading. So if for any reason you don't make a sterile incision or cut um, and it gets infected, the node will stop it. So it is best practice to cut just above. There we are. Bye, flower spike. 
Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna clean up my workspace, I'm gonna sanitize my workspace, and then I'm going to start the process of disinfecting. All right guys, we're back. The flower spike has been clipped off, so now we're just gonna begin the process of sanitizing this entire orchid. So, and here I've got my hydrogen peroxide, so I'm gonna go ahead and give the root system a really thorough spritz. Now that the roots have been treated, I'm gonna treat the leaves and the vegetation with my rubbing alcohol and dish soap solution. And now that that's complete, I'm gonna set a timer for 10 minutes and allow this all to set. Okay, Google, set a timer for 10 minutes. Sure, 10 minutes, starting now. All right, guys, the 10 minute treatment is done. So I've gone ahead and rinsed off the entire plant, leaves and the roots. And what we're gonna do now is get it repotted. So I've also sterilized its container just as a matter of good measure. Um, so I used my Fizan 20 solution to spritz the inside of the container and kind of scrub it out. And so now it is not harboring any of the bacteria that were already on the root system, just in case. So as always, I'm gonna fill LECA to where the drainage holes are. Now I'm gonna go ahead and place the orchid. And you can see where new growth is coming up, so I'm gonna leave some space for that. There's new growth coming up right here. Do you guys see that little cutie? So I'm gonna make sure that there's enough space for him to come in. So I'm gonna place it a little bit closer to the back. I'm gonna wrap the roots a bit, get it on in there. All right, now I'm gonna go ahead and begin placing the LECA all around it. All right guys, we're in the home stretch. We're almost done, just a few last steps. So where I clipped off that flower spike, I'm just gonna go ahead and sterilize the wound. Again, I always use just good old fashioned cinnamon because it's a fabulous natural antiseptic and drying agent. So I'm just gonna put a little dollop with a Q-tip right on the spot where we made the cut. Perfect. And I'm gonna go ahead and turn on this fan. So when you rinse the leaf system, I've had an issue with brown rot one too many times. I'll link the videos below. But sometimes I'm careless with the process of rinsing the plant after I've treated it. And if the water gets too far into the crown of the plant, it just rots everything out. So I don't wanna allow that to happen, which is why I've started to employ this lovely little fan. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn on the fan. And I'm also going to go ahead and give this a rinse with plain tap water and then fill the water reservoir with plain distilled water. I talk about this all the time, but right after you've done an antibacterial treatment like hydrogen peroxide, you strip the roots of the bacteria that help metabolize fertilizer. So you don't wanna over inundate the root system with something that could potentially burn it. So I'm just going to be using distilled water for the next two weeks to water and then I can resume my usual nutrient solution. All right, you guys, that's pretty much it. If you have any questions, concerns, or comments, go ahead and leave them in the comment section below. Don't forget to subscribe and have a beautiful rest of your day. Bye, guys.